My name is Lisa Lindqvist and I'm an application engineer. Today I will show you a surface model with a completely new sort of framework uh, of meshing in answers called mesh workflows. The mesh workflows will become a little bit more clear as we now uh, have an actual look at it. And this uh, shell or surface model is a collection of mid surfaces or surface bodies. Nothing in here is connected, <clears throat> so we can see it by the edge coloring. But we want to connect all of these parts on uh, on a mesh level. Uh, so let's go ahead and insert a mesh workflow. And we don't have to we don't have to bother anything with this mesh branch. We will work completely within the mesh workflow, and that can be inserted from here or from the model tree mesh workflows there or by right mouse clicking it doesn't matter which way you go uh, i will insert a custom mesh workflow that gives me complete control of the uh, meshing steps and the procedure so as we saw we have the input steps and output and uh, with the mesh workflows we have this context tab uh, with some different options. We can import workflows here and export. And we also have uh, toggled on by default is the property worksheet and domain browser. And these are available here to the on the right side menu. Uh, also available uh, always here at the top is the control panel where the user can uh, generate the entire workflow and toggle between different steps, clear the workflow. We can see what step is to be executed next. And uh, uh, yeah. And then we have the property worksheet here. I won't spend any time explaining this in this demonstration. We'll see that in the Valve uh, demo after this instead. So I'll instead go to the domain browser here. And this is uh, very handy to have open once you build the worksheet or workflow. So here you will have an overview of all the parts, zones, and labels within the workflow. And basically, the parts that will uh, be transferred from your uh, from your parts uh, of your model. So uh, the sort of top level parts, the multi-body parts, and, and so on. And then zones will be transferred from the bodies within those parts. So solid surface and line bodies will be collected here. And labels will be populated based on what name selections you have specified. So in my case here, I have specified uh, two name selections here. I have one called holes to fill because I know from uh, before that I want to fill all of these holes um, and then I have also created this one called pipe supports because I will want to uh, add a local sizing control to those supports. So let's initialize this workflow to see how that looks and that is done with just the, the normal scoping method that we we add what bodies we want to send to the workflow, either geometry based or name selection based. I will just do control A to grab everything, uh, scope that, and now let's initialize by right mouse clicking. And if we now go back to the domain browser here, we can see now under parts, we have all of the mid surface parts. Uh, under zones are our surface bodies and under labels we can now find the uh, two name selections that we have created. So if I click on these I can see them highlighted also uh, here graphically. So uh, let's start building the workflow then. Uh, first thing to point out is on this top level um, under steps we have some global controls of the elements um, or the mesh size. Um, for example, element max size, I'll just reduce that down to 100 millimeters. So we have some sort of base to work from. Uh, next, what I want to do is do any sort of topology modifications before I start building the mesh. 
and I will add these meshing steps by inserting and then we have mesh operations, we have input outputs, uh, topology operations and some other uh, steps they can insert. But I will start with doing uh, a hole filling procedure. So we have this one called fill holes and it's populated by this hole filling uh, sort of sub step. And now this is a bit where it starts to differ from your um, traditional meshing way of working. So when it comes to scoping, we can't do any sort of geometry based uh, scoping. I can't grab this edge and then apply it here. That doesn't work. Instead, the scoping is based on regular expressions. Um, and if I just select this arrow and do scope all, we can see it, it's populated by this dot star. And this basically represents any character whatsoever. So this means that I have now scoped all of my la labels. Uh, so I have also scoped these pipe supports which I don't want. Uh, but just to show you that if I were to switch this to part, for example, and I have this dot star, it will highlight all of the parts because dot star represents everything. Uh, I'll switch that back to, to label. Um, but I can just recommend you very quickly here. I'll just drag in the uh, ANSYS help. Um, so you have under mesh workflows, mesh workflow controls. In the very bottom here, you have this table uh, sort of explaining or giving some guidance on the regular expressions. Uh, so it's very, it can be convenient to have this handy when you're building the workflow, when you're sort of new to this, this concept. I'll just pull that back. And um, in my case here, then I want to fill the holes called holes to fill. And I can either just write that or I can grab this label, uh, click that I want to apply it to my scoping pattern and click apply. So now it has populated this field with holes to fill. Uh, the next thing I want to do within this step is to just toggle this topology connection to yes, so that it doesn't just sort of patch the hole, it actually connects it to the surrounding topology as well. Uh, I will go ahead and execute that step and if you noticed all of the holes are now gone. Next thing is to actually um, connect everything and uh, in order to to connect uh, the, the surfaces uh, in order for the sort of uh, prime mesh control to, to recognize uh, other parts and be able to create a conformal mesh between them. They have to be in a multi-body part and all of my parts are now individual. So in order to connect them, I have to start with um, actually merging all of these individual parts into one to create a, a multi-body part. And in my case here, I have a very simple scoping. All I want to do is merge all of the parts together. Uh, I can add a part name if I want to, but let's just execute this and confirm that all of my parts have now been uh, combined into one multi-body part with this name, but I could have given it some other name. Uh, but now I am ready to do the connect operation. So I will insert topology operation connect. And again, simple scoping in this, in this just demo case, I will, uh, I will connect everything together. And I will connect anything that lies within 10 millimeters with 100 millimeter size of the discretization and I'll add a co-planner angle tolerance there as well. Um, so these are now my conditions for the connections. And if I go ahead and execute this step, you will see in the edge coloring here that the connection has been successful. Um, again, I have my multi-body part here, but all of my individual zones, AKA surface bodies are still uh, sort of available here. 
uh, next up we will start building the actual mesh on this and I will continue adding a step after this uh, where I first will create some local sizing controls with this size field. It populates it by default with a curvature sizing. Um, I can scope that to everything and by default the curvature sizing is based on the global settings that we have defined here under steps. Uh, but I could have also switched this to value and entered some specific curvature sizing controls to maybe some other uh, body or, or label or uh, wherever I want the, the curvature to be. But under this size field I can have the option to insert other sizing controls and I want to apply a constant sizing control to these pipe supports. So by switching from part to label I can now scope this pipe supports either by writing it here or doing a scoping pattern like such. And I don't want this to be defined by the settings, I want it to be defined by my own value that I have set to 70 millimeters in this case. Um, and now that we execute this step, we won't see anything happening, but in the background, it will sort of solve for uh, a three dimensional size field across this, uh, this model. And I can now base a surface meshing on top of this size field that sort of honors the, the sizing controls I have specified. So I will insert a surface mesh. By default, it is a constant size surface measure that has a constant element size, but I want it to instead be uh, a size field surface measure. And I can write the name of the size field here, but I can also pull the uh, size field from upstream by defining it by outcome. So this will populate it by the sort of upstream uh, size field control. And I want to surface mesh all of the bodies. I want to mesh it with quadrilaterals. And let's execute that. It meshes very quickly. And if we just go in here, we can see that it has, it has connected the mesh. Uh, we do have some triangles here and there, and we can just add another setting just to show you. Um, I have to revert this step to be able to add additional controls under that step. So if you look under insert here, we do have, for example, the quad layer option that we saw in the previous webinar using the prime mesh method um, but what i would use now is the quad mesh advanced options because here we have a control to try to push down the number of triangles um, so we can execute that and see that now we get a, a reduction in the number of triangle elements here and last little tip here when we are working with the uh, surface uh, models is that we can insert this manage zone properties um, where you can insert in this case we can insert this zone thickness assignment so that we doesn't we don't have to reassign the thickness of these surfaces after we have outputted the workflow uh, we can instead assign thicknesses here so in my case i'll just for simplicity scope it to everything set it to 10 millimeters doesn't do anything visually here but when we now output this uh, we will have uh, thicknesses assigned to the surfaces and under output we have some controls available here uh, i want to output face zones because i don't have any volume zones in other words i don't have any bo uh, solid bodies i have surface bodies uh, we have the option to and uh, transfer labels to name selections as well. Um, but let's just complete this workflow and have a look that now we get a green check mark there. We have a green check mark on the mesh, which is now connected. And in the geometry tree, we still have these dormant parts, but in the very bottom, we have this multi-body part that was outputted now from 
from the workflow with the thickness assigned. Okay, that was the demo there. I hope you are interested in trying out the mesh workflows. Thank you.